Hello, you're watching Who Wa Wear Him here at WCTV with me, your host, Queen Banda. Today in the studio with me is Ed Edward Persavage. Yes, and my heart is pounding for not saying it correctly. That but, was really good. but I see the smile. Yes, so, all right. That was good. That was good. Okay, so um, I saw your name in the Article 26, that uh, the articles that we're going to be voting during the town meeting, that's coming up very soon. Um, and you are talking about um, temporary repairs for private ways. Yes. Yes, I, so you live in a private road. Yes, I do. And you're asking that the materials that you will pay for the labor and the town pays for the materials? No, the other way around. The, the other way around, that yes. you pay for the materials yes. and the town pays for the labor? Well, we already pay for the labor. You already, uh, yes, <laughs> okay. So the issue that you're presenting that you already pay for the labor yes. and that, lab that money is from the taxes that you're paying through maintenance, right? The maintenance taxes. Through the property taxes. The property taxes. Yes. So you're saying that there should not be any need for you to pay any extra. That's correct. Okay, so may you please talk more about this, since this is your article, and I please share some more light into okay, it. Okay, if I may. Uh, just a little bit of background. Uh, the town of Wareham has 193 miles of roads, of which there's 133 miles of accepted roads, or public roads, and 60-odd miles of unaccepted roads or private roads. Mm -hmm. And I use those two terms interchangeably. It's either a public or accepted road, or it's an unaccepted road or a private road. Yes. The uh, changes to the current bylaw that we have in effect, as you can see in Article 26, are a fairly simple. Mm -hmm. um, and before we get into it, I just want to mention that uh, there's a couple of things that uh, lie as a basis for the establishment of these changes. The first thing is the Massachusetts General Laws, uh, Chapter 40, Section 6N, which gives the uh, powers and duties of the cities and towns, and specifically that section, private ways, temporary repairs, ordinances, or bylaws. And it lists out that the towns have the opportunity to make repairs to private ways. And it's uh, all sp uh, specified uh, what's required uh, in the law. In addition, the changes that we made to our current bylaw were found in the bylaws of the town of Mass Mattapoisett, uh, Article 24 specifically. And in that particular article, um, they have a definition, and I'll just read that because this is uh, it's about two and a half pages long. But there's a definition, cost of material. Work shall be performed, and this is work for temporary repairs on private ways, Work shall be performed by the highway department personnel using town of Mattapoisett equipment. The petitioners, which would be the abutters to the road, shall be charged only for the cost of any and all materials used in the work. So we took that concept and we uh, incorporated it into our current bylaw. And we did that by uh, adding uh, three different paragraphs, uh, one sentence, and then by removing one. Specifically, and this is extremely important, the whole concept behind here is why are we doing this? Why are we involved in this? And the first change that we added, which comes right from the bylaw of Mattapoisett, is for the purpose of allowing safe and ready passage of police, fire, ambulances, and school buses the town may make temporary repairs on private ways which have been open to the public use. This is a safety issue. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> and the Mattapoisett has recognized this as a safety issue, and that's why they're taking the steps to make these types of temporary repairs on the roads so we can provide for a safe and ready passage of the police, fire, ambulances in case of any type of emergency. Uh, the other change we made to the bylaw was that we added that grading work on the private way shall be limited to twice annually. So that they could only grade it twice once it's requested by the abutters, 50% of the abutters, which doesn't change. Um, then the town will come in and we'll pay for any of the uh, supplies used. And that's the third change. Abutters shall be charged only for the cost of any and all materials used in the work. 
The cost of material to do such repairs should be paid by the abutters by a cash deposit or betterment assessed as here and after provided. That takes care of the charges. And I'll say one other thing, uh, what's removed uh, from the old bylaw is, and I quote, and if the Board of Selectmen declare that they are required by public necessity and convenience. Um, we're eliminating that because this, in our mind, in my mind, is no longer uh, a public necessity or it's a convenience. It is an identified as a public safety issue. If you can't get fired down the street or police or an ambulance, especially an ambulance, uh, that can get readily down the road, then you have a safety issue. Um, the other issue uh, that we mentioned in all of this was the fact that we're already paying property taxes. And we pay property taxes and property taxes pay for the town. Municipal maintenance is part of the town. So my property taxes are already paying for municipal maintenance. Now municipal maintenance is going to come down and they're going to grade my street and I'm going to pay them again. To me that doesn't seem fair. I've already paid them once. Why should I pay them again to do their job? And the town of Mattapoisett has already recognized this and said no. It's all taken care of. The only thing that you need, and the law states this, that you can't use public funds for this type of, of repair, is that anything that's used in this repair, such as gravel or dirt or anything that they have to shore up the roads with or any type of work that has to be done, is in fact paid by the abutters. And that's the basis of this entire article, those small changes to shift the responsibility back to the town of taking care of these roads and making sure that they're safe. Okay, so with this, I'm sensing that the argument that most people are going to be posing is that when you pay for property taxes or maintenance taxes or any, any kind of tax in the town, you, you kind of pay for the overall. There are things that affect you and you can see that money goes towards, and there are things that don't affect you, such as if you are an older person and you moved into the town, you don't have any children, but you still pay taxes that kind of goes to the school system. You don't have any child there, and you can't choose that. I do not want to pay a certain amount of tax because I don't have a child there. So I find that that argument can be related to this situation that, yes, we pay taxes, and so is everybody else, those people who do not have private roads pay these taxes towards that, but still they are not getting their the long driveways per se fixed, you know, or getting any funding from our local government towards the fixing. What would you say about that? Excellent point, and I missed it. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody that lives on an accepted road okay. or a public road has their repairs done by the town and municipal maintenance for free, no charge. They come in and they fix the road because the road's accepted, okay? So they're paying the same tax as I am for municipal maintenance, yet all of their work on all of their roads is free. There's no charge. Now, how do you explain that they get it done free and I have to pay, yet we're both paying taxes for municipal maintenance? Would they oppose the argument that you have picked to buy a house in a private road that, that kind of comes with a package of that's going to be extra maintenance? Well, that's another interesting point that was raised at the finance uh, committee meeting. Mm. Um, I did buy a house on a private road, and the real estate agent told me, one, the town takes care of the road, and two, they plow the road. And in fact, for the first 10 or 12 years that I lived there, the town did come down and grade the road twice a year, and they plowed it all winter. It's only been recently the town has decided, because they say it's against the law, to stop grading the roads and taking care of the roads that are private or unaccepted. So they were doing this all along. So, but, okay, so do you think that when they were doing this, it was just a matter of trying to be kind to a fellow neighbor, or, and they were going against the law, or the law does state that this kind of work should not be done? Well, if it was against the law, uh, the uh, article in uh, Mattapoisett was passed, uh, and I'm just uh, looking here right now, 
was passed on November 2nd, 2009. So it's been in effect over seven years. If it was against the law, it couldn't have been in effect that long. So it's, it's a matter of how you adjust how you're going to take care of these issues in order to fit in with the law. And in this particular case for Mattapoisett, which we model our changes with, what they did was say, okay, the only charge involved in all this is the material used. And that's why we stuck with staying with the material used. Okay, so the funding for the repairs will come from the taxpayers, the, the money that you're already paying for the taxes. Exactly right. Okay. All right, so you're not asking for additional money from any other pocket. We're not asking for any money, and, and, and just to go back and clarify that, we, our taxes are paying for the work of municipal maintenance, which means we're paying for the salary of the municipal maintenance workers. We're paying for the machinery. We're paying for the gasoline. We're paying for everything to do with municipal maintenance. Now, what's in addition to that is any material used in the repair of the roads, the roads, and we are, in fact, willing to pay for that. So if you ask me, there's no net cost to the town. They're there. We're paying for them. Okay. Another argument that um, a friend of mine did impo uh, stated yesterday as we were reading through this, so in terms of a school bus, as you mentioned here, that this is all for the safety, such as ambulance, police, and school buses. In terms of the school buses, then those parents should walk their children to a main road to kind of get the bus from there. And in terms of fire, uh, fire police car and uh, fire ambulance, that those vehicles are big and they normally send the whole gang in there. So it's not like one police car gets stuck and so forth. Well... It that there's really not a urgency to this situation. Well, if I, if I was having a heart attack, it would be urgent for me to get an ambulance there to take me to the hospital, okay? And if the ambulance has trouble getting down my street to get to me to take me to the hospital, yes, that is an <laughs> urgent matter for me. And it could be an urgent matter for anybody that's called in on these things. I mean, you don't know what the emergency is going to be. The, the responsible thing to do, especially in a safety matter and a safety issue, is to make sure that they are, as we say in the actual article, allowing safe and ready passage so that the streets are available so the police and fire can get down there with no problems, take care of the emergency situation that they call for. Now, the issue on, on uh, school buses, uh, we, I took from um, uh, Matt Poisset. I don't know if Wareham has, in fact, uh, pri uh, school buses traveling on private roads, but we include it in there in case they do, because that would be an issue. You don't want the kids bouncing all over the school buses and getting knocked down and everything else because they're going over a road that, uh, you know, it takes a tank to go over. Uh, and uh, the, actually, the road I'm on is pretty bad right now. It's getting to the point where it's getting to uh, be almost impassable. You have to slow down so slow that you're just about crawling to get over all of the potholes. You said a good point. You said that uh, the, how terrible your road is. Now, is there a qual kind of a qualification of how bad your road should be that to, in order to receive this funding or whenever you feel like there is a bump that you don't want it to be there, the, the, um, the town should repair it? Okay. Okay. There's... <coughs> um, what started all this is, is a new policy dealing with private roads in the town of Wareham. Uh, and they started originally with uh, snow plowing. And uh, there were some discussions about policy regarding snow plowing. And uh, even though it didn't pass, as far as I understand, uh, with the Board of Selectmen, the discussions were that the maintenance department was going to come down and they were going to inspect your private road. And if it had a pothole over two inches deep, they were not going to plow it in the winter. <laughs> Let me see now, whose responsibility is that, right? Is it a safety issue that's the responsibility of the town to take care of, or is it my issue? Okay. The town is saying it's your issue. That's what the town is trying to say, and what I'm saying is <laughs> that it's the town's issue, okay? And as already been ex explained and accepted, the town of Moist, uh, Mattapoisett has in fact accepted that responsibility to keep the roads safe and accessible. Okay, whether they're private or public. 
And this, this whole idea of tying this all together, now you've got snow plowing based on the condition of the road, you've got the condition of the road that we're going to have to pay to get fixed, but everybody else doesn't have to pay for that. Only the people on private roads have to pay for that. People say that, um, yes, we take, we kind of refer to matter poisons bylaws a little bit to kind of add to our own bylaws. Would the argument be that because it is matter poisoned, it's a different kind of town from us, that there's so much we can copy from them? Uh, no, no. matter poisoned is, is very similar to uh, Wareham. It's a beach town, just like we are, and they have a bunch of private ways, just like we do. Uh, if you notice uh, a lot, not all, but there's a lot of these private ways are usually down in the beach areas. I live in Briarwood, uh, right at the uh, edge of uh, Marion and Wareham. We've got 12 private ways in, in uh, uh, Briarwood, approximately 138 households. Um, if you go around to the other beach areas, you'll see that a lot of places that weren't paved and don't have drainage, they're usually dirt roads, usually beach sand type roads. Um, they're all private ways. They're all around the beach areas. Aunts, it's got a lot of private ways. Um, all of economic status. Mm, no, no, not really, because obviously the uh, beach areas are the, uh, uh, <laughs> I would think, uh, that if you're close to the water, you're at the higher end of things because those are the more expensive homes because you're down near the beach. Um, so it, it's not an economic issue at all. Some of these roads have signs that do not enter, it's private. Yes, that's correct. Okay, so even the public cannot use or admire the road and so forth. So I'm thinking, would the issue be that to take out those signs and if we are going to help you repair these roads, then we have to enjoy these roads as well, even if you just follow a walk? Well, as we have in our old <laughs> bylaw and currently in our new one, and I'll read you the sentence again. Yeah. For the purpose of allowing safe and ready passage of police, fire, ambulance, and school buses, the town may make temporary repairs on private ways which have been open to public use. Okay. If they're not open to public use, none of this applies. All right. So the roads have to be open to public use in order for this to kick in. Okay. So what, do you, what kind of support are you feeling you're going to be getting? Well, uh, and uh, uh, we'll go a little bit further with this and, and some of the messages we're trying to get to the group. I don't know if you had the opportunity to watch the selectmen's meeting last night. No, I, I did not have the opportunity. Oh, okay. Uh, the select, at the selectmen's meeting, it was announced that the Finance Committee voted uh, unanimously for further study on this article. Oh. So that's good news. No. It's not good news. <laughs> it's not well, good we're just news. trying to, to make sure everything is correct. Does it, does it look that complicated? <laughs> if you look at I've only I've only added three phrases here. This is not, this isn't rocket science here. No, it's only three phrases. And that's all that's doing is, ch is changing how the payment is made. Okay. It's a very simple concept. The sec selectmen turned around last night and also voted for further study okay. on this particular article. And basically that's shelving it and putting it away. Now it may or may not come back. Uh, it may get a committee that uh, is going to investigate it. What they're going to investigate, I don't know because it's not that much there <laughs> okay. to, for a change. But uh, I was very disheartened to see that the, uh, both of these bodies, in fact, voted for further study. Uh, at town meeting, usually when something is put up for far, uh, further study, it's, it's buried, it's shelved, and it doesn't come back, uh, and, it, and it's gone. Now, hopefully, uh, a couple of things I want to get across to anybody that's watching this. First, do you live on a private way or an unaccepted way? One way to find out is to call the town clerk's office. They have a complete list of all of the accepted roads and all of the unaccepted roads. Don't think that you know you may or may not be on an unaccepted road. Even if it's paved, it still might not be unaccepted. So you should find out. The second thing, uh, if you think it's unfair that you're paying twice for municipal maintenance, 
If you are concerned about the safety issue involved in this, please, October 24th, 7 o'clock, town meeting is in the high school auditorium. Come, vote, protect yourself about what's going on here and, and what we're trying to do. Um, there's, not, there's not two groups of people here, one that lives on public roads and get everything done free, and the rest of us that live on private roads or unaccepted roads that have to pay for everything. We're all paying the same taxes. We should get the same benefits. So come and vote. If you want this to pass, because the, the uh, two bodies have already voted for further study. So they will try to change this um, at town meeting when I make the presentation. They're going to try to amend it from being acceptable to further study. We would have to defeat that, bring back the original article, and then pass that article here. Okay. Well, with your passion, I don't think anything is going to be passing you at all. Well, thank you. I, I, I uh, do get involved uh, a little bit. I've been involved before. And uh, actually, I'm just trying to make the town better and uh, provide some uh, services to everybody in town. You're going to be there? I'm going to be there. You're going to be there. Yes, I okay. am. Uh, Sitting in the front row? Nothing well, I don't know about the front row, but I'll, I'll be there because I have to make the presentation. Okay. I started the uh, petition, so I have to get up and, uh, and actually now, introduce did it. Did you gather fellow people who are living in private roads to kind of set a little group to make sure that those people are going to be present, or all these have been on yourself? No, at, well, actually, I, I went around, but the, but the situation was that... Um, there was more than enough uh, residents right in my neighborhood that signed. We, I only needed 10 signatures. I think we got 25 or 30 um, to uh, submit the article. So there was plenty of people there. One of the great opportunities of, of being here at WCTV is to get the word out to the others because there's really no way to communicate with them because I don't know where they are. I don't know where they're located. I don't know who the contact person is to try to reach out. By the way, if anybody is interested, it's Eddie Pasevich. I live at 42 McKinley Street in Wareham, and the phone number is 508-291-1787. Okay. You're going to be getting a lot of calls. I hope. <laughs> if you have any questions, call me. I don't mind. I'm retired, and I'm usually working around the house in the yard. Okay. Well, thank you once again for joining us in the studio. Thank you for the opportunity. Well, thank you so much for watching Who Wa Wear Him here at WCTV. Again, with me, your host, Quinn Banda. Until then, have a wonderful day.